news or not. Oh, I have to speak out loud. Okay, that's what they're probably thought. Huh, I thought it was one of those things that picked up brainwaves. Okay. Um, so Hangman, Hangman is, is no longer with us. We're off into bold new terrain that I have no idea where we're going. But breaking with a Hangman format means we get to use props. Okay, which for me is always a plus. Um, so I've got some colored sticks here. And if you guys could take some, everybody get like three or four colored sticks and pass them down. Um, three or four colored sticks, pass them down. Um, now I do reuse these sticks and the rule of thumb is I want these sticks back provided they are intact and haven't gotten exposed to any bodily fluids or anything. <laughs> but if they fail that, um, then you get to keep them. They're, they're <laughs> yours. Um, so, and here's <laughs> some for the smaller table. Thank you. Okay. So while you guys are passing those around, my vision hallucination grand scheme here for the new format <laughs> is something I'm calling thinking outside the framework. Now, how many of you guys know what a pattern is? Some? OK, we've got some. Yeah, fair number. OK. Trick question. Well, <laughs> so a pattern, I'm going to define it in a way that is hopefully compatible with what you think you know about a pattern. A pattern describes a way that you could do something. It's a way you could write some code. It's a way you could architect a building, which was the, the origin of the pattern languages. There's another parallel notion that we don't talk about as much, and that's frames and frameworks. Now, what a frame is, is a way of thinking about something. So a pattern tells you how to do something. A frame contextualizes the way you think about it. And just like some patterns work well together, some frames work well together. And if you've got a set of frames that work well together, you can build a framework. Um, probably the framework that most people are familiar with, the MVC framework, actually consists of a whole bunch of notions of how to do things. And if you do it all that, that way, they all fit together. It all works really nicely. And if you decide to go against the grain and do something weird, then you're fighting the framework, and it's going to be miserable. Okay. And that's fine. You know, that's fine as a tool. It's great convenience, and there are good reasons why we don't weld wood. Okay, um, and it's probably no. We don't need to rediscover that. That's a bad idea each time, but. You guys laugh because when I say weld wood, you can think about what that would be like and visualize it. You can have some notion of it because your thinking isn't bound to the framework. right? Now, there was a couple of pe uh, people. Michael said something to me a while back, and Sam's presentation talked about it. There's things that we don't teach people that we don't really talk about. If you want to get in a conversation about patterns, it's really easy to find somebody who talk patterns with you. What you don't see so much is opportunities to talk about your frameworks for thinking and the frames in which you're thinking, and to practice shifting gears between different frameworks. Another thing, then this is more particular to the point to uh, Sam's presentation last month, is visualizing. One of the things that um, is a huge benefit to a developer is to be able to look at a problem and see it in some abstract way and juggle it in your mind. And that works great unless you're visualizing it the wrong way, in which case you need to twist that around and see it from another perspective, which also is probably going to be wrong because Murphy, you know. So you switch it around and you do that and everything. And that takes work. That takes practice. It takes effort to learn how to switch your visualizations around. And so what I'm hoping to do with this series is that we can give people an opportunity to practice changing frames. And the first one is going to be pretty visualization heavy, but I'm not going to commit to that. They could be weird after this. Actually, this is going to be weird too. 
Um, so what I'm going to talk about is triangles. And specifically, triangles that we could make by laying little sticks end to end. And we're going to pretend that these are platonic ideal sticks, and that when they're going like this, then that's a straight line, you know, and whatever. They're integer length. And so really, we're talking about triangles with integer length sides. Now, how many of you guys have done anything with uh, geospatial stuff or even looked at a map, right? Um, OK. <laughs> Latitude, wait. The majority of you have never looked at a map? <laughs> a bunch of iPhone people. Just turn left, turn right. No. Um, so, so you guys are all pretty comfortable, I assume, with the notion of like latitude, longitude, x, y, cross streets, specifying a location. Can anyone here, and Brent, if the answer is you, just laugh, remember. Oh. Um, okay. Can any of you imagine what it would be like to live in a space where a triangle designated uniquely a location. So that the lo a triangle was a location, and a different triangle was a different location. OK? That's one of the targets for this presentation. And we're not going to go there. We're not going to go directly there. We're going to come upon it maybe by accident, or maybe not. Um, instead. What we're going to do is we're going to start off trying to count the triangles that we could make with some number of sticks. And that's too strong a word. We're not really going to try and figure that out. We're going to think about it as if we're trying to figure it out, but we're not actually going to try and do it. We're going to explore it. It's going to be just <laughs> switching frames around. Um, the mental pump I'd like you guys to do, imagine that you're in a, a park. Okay? It's a beautiful park. It's a gorgeous day. You've never been this place before. Everybody take a moment. Imagine you're in the park. And you see a sign that's been posted up by the park ranger that says, Yodeling Range Closed Due to Sunshine. Okay? <laughs> imagine you think to yourself, I don't give a hoot what a yodeling range is or why sunshine would close one. But I got some time to kill. I really do not want to go back to the office. I'm going to wander around and see if I can figure out what's going on here with the yodeling range sunshine thing with no expectation I'm actually going to find an answer, but it's an excuse to be in the park. That's how we're going to approach the triangles. <laughs> so with the stated conditions, if you have three sticks, how many unique triangles can you make sticking them end to end? What? In this context, if I put the purple one on the left or on ah. the right, are those two? I forgot. I should give you the thing I give to the grade school kids. OK. <laughs> so I've been teaching, I've been pretending to teach college level math to grade school kids. And the way I teach them is that all of math has one simple recipe. We call it the math game. The way it works is this. You decide what you're going to talk about. You decide what parts of that thing you're going to pay attention to and agree to ignore everything else. And then you figure out what you can say that will always be true. And that right there is all of mathematics. I say one then. OK. One triangle. One triangle. And what we're saying when we say that, in addition to ignoring little bits about the links maybe are not the same and everything, we're going to ignore the color, we're going to ignore all these things, the platonic ideal. We are going to just ignore those things. And if we ever come up with a question, those are vitally important sorts of questions. Yeah? Is, is it uh, Euclidean geometry or is it curved space? <laughs> um, so that's a good point. Um, we are going to assume that they're in a plane. Okay. And I'm going to do because I've thought through that way. And if we go off into non-Euclidean geometries, um, I'll bet you there's something really interesting that um, we will get lost in. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's not a bad question. In fact, that's a really good question. Um, I, do, does anybody know the story between Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry? No. Yeah. So um, basically, yeah, on the order of 1,000 years or so, nobody noticed that they were confused about some of their assumptions. They did step one, we're going to talk about geometry. Step two, they hadn't actually quite nailed that down. And that's a very common pattern. In fact, we're going to call it a frame. 
When you get into a problem, you get into a domain, you think you've got it nailed down, okay? You get in and you find out that there are edge cases you hadn't considered because you hadn't thought and you didn't decide one. It's arguable. It could go either way. And I also promised that I'm going to try and tie these things back to software. That frame is incredibly valuable when you're programming and you should learn to recognize it because most of the time when software doesn't work and it's not just a stupid error, the real underlying problem is you assumed some simple world and then you set your code out to run on the internet with all sorts of crazy stuff and you didn't think, oh yeah, Unicode, I didn't figure out I was going to do that, you know. And you get into these cases where the edge cases, it's the ones you didn't expect, you don't have any tests for it, those are the ones that bite you. So recognize those. Okay, so we've got one triangle and it looks kind of like that. Now, what if I give you two sticks? How many triangles? No, two sticks, just two. Zero. Zero. What? Does your plane have an edge? <laughs> Does what? Does the plane have an edge? <laughs> uh, it's an infinite plane, um, just Euclidean, and no, there's no edge you can work with. OK, so no. Intact sticks, platonic ideal, they are perfect. OK, so does everyone agree that with two sticks, you can make zero triangles. There are no triangles you can make with two sticks. Yes. Yes. Um, everybody? OK. Unless they're going up from the plane and you use the plane. Nope. Nope. <laughs> they have an integer number of sides. So I'm going to posit that let's suppose that there was a rational, clever, honest, and exceptionally ornery person in the room. Uh, we, I'm sure there is, actually, but let's see, let's <laughs> posit one. Who called out, no, there's one triangle? Okay. What would they be thinking? Can any of you imagine what the one triangle they think you could make would be? What? One, one, zero. Yeah. You could make, if this is zero, one, one, that is not what most of us would consider a triangle, but unless you're very careful with your definitions, that might meet your definition of a triangle. And the smart aleck might be right. Can you draw it bigger? What? <laughs> well, the idea is it's one stick and one stick, and that one end we designate as having a zero stick side on it. <laughs> what? Yeah, like that, except closer together. That's a square, because there's a zero side on the other side, too. No, no, he says no. <laughs> OK, and the, the thing about the zero side, <laughs> what? No, because we're assuming they're ideal. OK, now, I think most of us would agree that that person was wrong about triangles. OK, but it's also something that somebody plausibly could argue. That's another example of the framing issue, or the, of the frame narrowing down what our definition is. So what is a triangle? Can somebody give me a definition for a triangle? It is a shape with three non-zero integer sides. <laughs> <laughs> OK, three. Wait, OK, so, so we have um, three non-zero um, and an integer triangle. Let's call, call, the, call these inties. Inties. Int tries. <laughs> Entries, OK, uh, non-zero. Um, three non-zero integers. So one, one, if, if okay, positive. <laughs> three um, positive. Natural three natural numbers. <laughs> Wait, natural numbers is zero, is zero unnatural? Yeah. Okay, so another way is z uh, three ordinal numbers. Do you guys like that? Or three positive numbers? Programmers love to say ordinal. Ordinal. <laughs> it's like one of our favorite words. <laughs> okay. No, no, but or, it doesn't have to be a triangle. Um, no, an, an, int an integer triangle. What? Positive natural? But it, it, an integer number is sides. Where the sum of two sides can't equal the. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Three. Okay, so I'm going to say three <laughs> positive <laughs> integers. Three positive integers, and then I want to get what you're saying. Um, it satisfies the triangle inequality. OK, <laughs> which is? Which is called. Wait, wait, what, what's? Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> 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 OK, so it's 
The, the, what did you say? The, the sum of any two sides can't be less than the length of a third. The sum of any two sides cannot, OK. So um, OK. So A plus B is greater than C, um, where um, A greater than B greater than uh, a greater than equal to like that, or is that a equal to? That's equal. OK, so a um, three integers that when sorted, the first two, the sum of the first two is greater than the third. I think you mean the other way. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. less. That's You're right. <laughs> okay, good. Now this is what I'm wanting. Okay, you guys. Okay, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a clock here. You guys, um, you, you, thir yeah, Chris. Okay, you take some number of TikToks to convince him, and then you get to rebut if you don't agree. Okay, uh, it's equivalent. I have a math degree from Reed, and you know it. <laughs> Argument by authority. Argument by authority. Okay. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> OK, here's another, here's another frame I want to point out. I happen to agree with them. And at 2 in the morning, when you're trying to figure why the server keeps rebooting, you should index these things. What was that thing we all agreed to because, well, argument by authority? Um, those, are often, those are often the ones you need to revisit because it's possible to fall into groupthink. Um, but I, I happen to be in this group. I think you guys are, I think they're equivalent. That's why I wrote it. What? You're in the group, so you agree. I'm in the group, so I agree. OK. <laughs> so that means that for 1, um, we can't make 1 as a sum, so it's 0. And for 0, we have 0. And for 4, how many do we have? Wait, do they have to have integer sides? Integer sides for int tries. And they lay flat on a plane? Or not? They lay flat on the plane. They have to lay flat. Yes. You have to use all the sticks. You have to use all the sticks, yes. There's zero? Wait, some people say zero, some people say two. Nominate yourself a leader and argue. You have to use all of the sticks, so you can't use Wait. the other sticks. Wait, okay. Um, That's why he's saying zero, but he's wrong, because you could have that one just lie along the other? Not an integer. No. It wouldn't be an integer, then it would be a half. You would stick in the middle. If the requirement is there two integer length sides. Snug on the bottom. If the requirement is not integer length, with three, you have an infinite number of triangles. Right. Each stick is a unit length. OK. Um, another frame I'm going to call out here. How many people have seen this pattern happen in doing software? You have the first meeting, somebody reads the high level thing, right? And they say, this is going to do x and so. And everybody nods and smiles. And you all agree exactly what this code is going to do. Three minutes into the first time you start doing it, there's this disagreement where like, what are you talking about? That's not, that's not what they want. You know, um, People always agree. And then as soon as you get down to the details, everybody's got different opinion. Um, I'm going to say arbitrarily um, that, just to keep us on a path that I know, um, <laughs> that the number of sticks is a proxy for the perimeter of the triangle. And so when I say having four sticks, what I really mean is how many int tries with a perimeter of four are there? Zero. There is, OK. Does everyone agree that there's zero there? Yes. Come on, yes. take me. Yes. OK. Now, if we decided to take the other choice, and this goes back to the thing about Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry, there's interesting stuff down there, but we're just not going down there tonight. It, the, other, the other path, the road less traveled, also has something interesting. OK, five. One. OK. Two. Two is correct. Two. Two is correct. What? I changed my answer to two. Two is correct? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, no. Can you do what? two? You can't do two. It's two? No. no you can, can you two? reuse the middle one? Yeah. What? The same. Twice. No. Hold the fingers. How many do you think there are? Hold yeah. Oh, good idea. Thank you. If it's unique, then one. OK. So what I'm going to do this time is every table, is there any ones over here? Any onesies? Everybody here thinks two? Uh, no, you're just the group thing team. OK, actually, so um, um, what is your name, David? Oh, Fred. Fred, could you come over here? 
each group now has at least one, one, and one, two. <laughs> Can you guys break out into your tables? Yeah. Single triangles of perimeter of five. How many int tries with a perimeter? Uh, can somebody make a different triangle for me if you have a second idea of how to make this? Uh, this is the only triangle I know how to make. No, they can't. That's, that's, all single. that's the only triangle, right? Yeah. yeah. We all agree? Yeah. But that's yeah. 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 That's not so you can make? Yes, yeah. it's the same as that triangle. Two, two, uh, it's also the same as the triangle. What? 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 You can make two no. triangles only if you use the one side of the other triangle. Right. So Okay. So if you were to use like this, then like this, and like that. Okay. But only if that wasn't the case, could you only make one? Okay. So when when your table has reached consensus, raise your hands. Are we we're in consensus and we're a table? Are you guys? Are you in yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the answer could be one, two, or three. It could. Depending oh, three. Yeah, I'm not. Right. Okay. That's five. But you can also go one, two, three, four, five. Ah. That's three triangles total that I can make with right. five because I'm reshuffling them. But is this allowed? Um, I'm going to say no. This was the one I was going for, but yes, th th that was a vagueness. So, okay. Yes. <laughs> bing, bing. <laughs> Marcus, you said it had to be the three. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The twos are liars. What? So you guys are ones? One? One? Okay. What? So, um, what? Can they share a side or do they have to be So we're trying to make a single triangle with five sticks. And we're wondering how many different ways we can do that. Although that is, right. But I hadn't clarified that. What? Is it that this, the middle one does not count as a perimeter in that shape, correct? Well, right. The other thing, though, is I was looking for a single triangle, but I hadn't specified that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys yet again caught me. Okay. So. All the, all the sticks in a single perimeter. Single perimeter. Single, okay. What? Is it is it perimeter like the Yes, perimeter. This Okay, so this Yeah. Yes. It's not that. Yes. Yes. Oh, so in that case it's a perimeter. It's what? Okay. Revise my claim. What? It's an infinite number of triangles. Infinite number of triangles in the perimeter of 5. Six or more, you can make an infinite number of triangles with a perimeter of n. Whatever you want. Because if okay. you take the triangle, I can move it just that much. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm seeing the same questions come up, so I'm going to make some. <laughs> I'm going to add some arbitrary constraints here, and then I'm going to ask you a totally different question. But then we'll go back to this. So the cons first constraint is where I did not specify and should have. I'm looking for a single triangle okay, with the specified perimeter. Okay, the number of sticks is just a proxy for the perimeter. I'm just wanting a single triangle. Okay, and I don't care about rotational symmetry. So if you rotate the thing, um, thank you, Brent. Um, it's not a different triangle to just do that. Nor is simply waiting for the Earth to move change <laughs> that to a unique triangle. So, um, that's the, that's the third, the th three mo <laughs> two months from now. Um, uh, quantum mechanics and Ruby performance metrics. Um, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, uh, you just gave a spoiler, but I'm going to go ahead and ask the question. Um, so with that, my answer would have been 1, and it's the 2, 2, 1 triangle. Okay. But I hadn't nailed it down. The ambiguity was the fault that the specification was vague. Now. That sounds like software. Yeah, it does sound like <laughs> software, doesn't it? Um, 
Two valid things. They both pass the test, but they produce wrong, different answers. Uh, one of them has got to be wrong. Um, OK, so I have a question for you. How many people think that we're out of the woods and we've gotten through? Because there's a sense that you mostly have that the ambiguities come early, and then as you go on, you'll have cleared it. Are we done? Do we now have a good definition? What? Yeah, it's zero three times, and then one, and then zero some more, and then one. <laughs> um, OK. But are we going to have more ambiguity when we get up there? Yes. Yes. Probably. Yes. 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 Onward. We'll immediate ambiguity. What? With six, we will have immediate ambiguity. OK. Wait. Are they one triangle, or are they two? How are we counting? Six triangles. So perimeter six. Perimeter six. Two, two, two. OK, we've got 2, 2, 2. I'm going to start writing them down by their edge size. Somebody's call out 2, 2, 2. 1, 2, 3. No. No. Nope. Fails the inequality. Does anyone else have a 6? So with a perimeter 6, do you guys have anything other than 2, 2, 2? You still want one triangle. What? Always one triangle. Wait. What is it? OK, <laughs> <laughs> one, one. One, 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 two. No, but it's single triangle, <laughs> perimeter of six. OK, so we've got one for six. For seven, how many do we have? Two. OK, call them out. Three, three, one. Three, three, one. Two, two, three. Does everybody agree with those? If it's right, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with what? Because we're wanting a single triangle. That's two triangles. But I wanted two triangles. Yeah. And actually, by the way, <coughs> you guys, when, when I shut down these alternate paths, like the hourglass form and everything, um, the reason I'm doing that is we are off-roading. And we are not that far from doctoral dissertation level confusion, OK? <laughs> Where, and I, I, this, is, this is one of the weird things about getting into mathy stuff and actually going off road and outside of the framework, is you're actually generally fairly close to some very hairy problems for which no one knows the solution. Um, and in order to keep this within a reasonable amount of time, I'm going to keep us actually, um, this is like one of those um, uh, Disneyland tours, I'm trying to keep us kind of close to a known path. Um, there's all sorts of fun stuff off in those woods. So the, the boundaries of what you're describing, the only possible answers are zero or one. The, no, um, just, we just did two. Wait, seven has two so the going once, going what? So um, actually, you guys, uh, can you guys mix it up? You guys explain to each other. So this table has two of perimeter seven. What? OK, two, two, one, and oh, sorry. Three, two, three, two, two, and three, three, one, and two. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Are there any, uh, what? Are there any others? We're agreed? That has a perimeter of six. OK. So two for eight. Now you guys should be getting good at these. Eight. How quick can we do this? What? I should, I should be up here to write, shouldn't I? Three, three, two. Three, three, two. There's one. Three, three, two is the only one. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Actually, can you insert a delay loop because you're being your well? You don't have to stop. Just okay, delay. Okay. Okay. So for eight. Okay. I want to hear it. What did, what did you say about factors? It's not about factors. It's about sums. It's, all, it's about how many times you can break it into numbers that don't add up to more than the other two combined. Isn't that factors? No, well, that's, that's products. products. Factors is multiplication. Right. But if you run it through a discrete logarithm, you can get there. But it's, it's, a, it's an alley where you'll get stabbed by cryptographers. 
Um, so you don't want to go down there with Bob and Alice, trust me. Oh, <laughs> Carol's waiting for them. Okay. Um, so somebody actually noted that this is a this is a um, this is actually part of a larger problem of how many w times can one energy be broken up into two partitions of certain sizes. Okay, and that recognizing a, a pre-existing problem is a valuable tool in, so in solving things like this. Um, fortunately for the present case, this isn't exactly one of those. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to say that, let's see, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, anything. let's start moving to this notation, okay? And I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. And I'm going to do this. Um, actually, how are we doing on time? What time is it? 7.44, yeah. I should be, OK, I'm going to take us to a scenic overlook and show you guys the coordinate thing, and then we're going to go um, on. So 0, 0, 0 is not a triangle, right? We could have 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. We could add 1 to any of those. OK? Does anyone recognize what this is going to make? What? Tree. What type of tree? M tree. M tree? OK. I don't think there's a ternary tree, is there? Uh, I don't know. Um, 0, <laughs> we could add to the, this is, I'm going to add to the first one here. 0, um, 0, 2. Or 0, 1, 1, and I could get to there from that. Or 1, 1, 0. This is not what I expected. Or um, <laughs> 0, 2, 0. Or 0, 2, 1. Or my gosh, this is going to get a mess really fast. Yeah. What? A feed forward network? Oh, four, yes, that's another. OK. Here's the one that makes this easy to visualize. X, Y, Z. Here is 0, 0, 0. Here is 0, 0, 1. Here's 0, 1, 0. Here's 1, 0, 0. Um, OK. Everybody comfortable with this? OK. Now we notice that the this area here, these three possibilities, none of which are our triangles, form a plane running through this space. So can everybody imagine you've got this gigantuan infinite corner of an infinite cube. You've sliced a corner off. You've got this little triangle here. OK? A triangle is not triangles. <laughs> this is a different triangle. This is not the triangle we're interested in. This is not the triangle. Right. OK. <laughs> and up here, we can do this next one. And it's going to be another triangle um, with these guys out here like this, like that. My drawing is horrible. And so on. We've got these triangular slices off the cubes. OK. Now, if we do this. If we look at these now, we rotate this, and we're looking straight up here. We're going to put our eyeballs down here. Be careful, it's hard. Okay, <laughs> we're looking up that way. What we'll see at the first level is a dot, and down below it, we will see three dots like that. Okay, and then the next plane down, we will see. Six like that, OK? And next one down, we'll see 10, et cetera, like a bowling ball arrangement okay, of those planes. Let's come way out here and say we're looking at a whole bunch of sticks. OK, we're looking at the, all the triangles of a perimeter of 138, OK? We take this slice out. Okay. Now, these things here 
are triples of numbers. But down here, this number here, the x, let's say this is the x. Um, well, I'm going to go back to this with a, b, and c. Um, this is a, 0 to big. This is b, um, 0 to big. And um, c equals a plus b. a um, is the perimeter minus a minus b. So this area over here, a and b are too small to add up to c, so not a triangle. This area over here, um, a is too big. b and c can't add up to it, not a triangle. This area up here, okay, um, b is too big. a and c can't add up to it, not triangles. Right? Is this making sense to people? Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> is what? Zelda the answer. Zelda is the answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so our <laughs> questionable triangles live on this boundary here. Are triangles that were like 4, 2, 2? Two. 4, 2, 2, and those ilk live here. Can anyone visualize this and tell me where on this diagram equilateral triangles live? Yeah, the center. This, this is where our equilateral triangles live. OK? Now, how about, um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Um, likewise, we could identify isosceles triangles, scalene triangles, things like that. We could identify them. And now what we've got is every triangle with the rotation being cared about is a point in this space. And similar triangles, if we draw a line through these planes, we'll have all the triangles of the same shape. So our notions about triangles, um, this is an isosceles triangle, this is an equilateral triangle, these two triangles are similar, become notions about live in the same narrow neighborhood, follow along the same line in triangle space. Yeah? Wouldn't that mean that there would be like a line which solves for Pythagorean theorem? There are. It's, well, OK, so actually, yeah, right triangles um, that fall in, or actually, uh, int tri. Int tri is the integer triangles. Triangles with an integer, all the sides are integers that um, satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, OK? Like 3, 4, 5. So um, you guys, everybody, I mean, I'll explain it in case anybody, so we don't have to do show of hands. Um, the Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the shortest side plus the square of the middle side equals the square of the longest side. Okay? Um, the simplest right case right in triangle for, for right triangles, yes, for, for right angle triangles. Um, the simplest case of that um, is 3, 4, 5 for um, int tries. There are other solutions, uh, like 5, 12, 13 is another solution. And in fact, if you take the solutions and project them into this space, they make some really pretty geometric patterns, um, which incidentally have, um, at one time, like World War II, II era, um, had some significance because uh, cryptography. Um, a lot of these things, when you're in these space of visualizing things funny, um, what will happen is there's this way of visualizing looking at the world that at some point meant that somebody's codes weren't secure. Um, and it may happen again. Um, so any case, so this is triangle space. And we could label each of these points with a triangle, except that we're only really concerned with this cone out the center. And then if you fall off, if anybody played a game where if you fall off one edge of the map, you're back onto the, oh, yeah, exactly, Pac-Man. You're back onto the other edge. It wraps around. We've got something like that happening, but with 60 degree symmetry in here. Because as we start shrinking down one side of, let's say, our longest side, we shrink it down, we shrink it down, we shrink it down. At some point, it's not our longest side anymore. So we come back with a triangle that we would have had elsewhere. And because we said we don't care about the order of the, tri uh, the sides, you just wind it back on someplace else. So it would be a strange space. But you could imagine that if you lived there, your address would just be a triangle. 
And what you would do to navigate, if you could see, you know, the GPS thing would show you a triangle. You would say, oh, that triangle's too small. I need to move this way. Oh, OK. Um, well, the legs are, legs are too different in length. I need to move towards the center you know, now that I'm in the right neighborhood. And then I just need to kind of move around until I adjust the ratio of the other two legs. And I would have found my friend's house. Um, I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. Yeah, did you have a, a no? Oh, you just hand dance. OK. Um, <laughs> just very about triangles. Yeah, yeah. So does that mean that you could measure like, uh, where one of the triangles was also, not just by the three side, but also by like its distance from the center and a uh, degrees from like some yes. arbitrary starting point? Wait, you want polar coordinate triangles? Yeah, and actually, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's another fun one that you can do is instead of talking about the lengths of the legs, look at the angles and use those to project onto a series of nested spheres. OK? Um, that one's fun and kind of mind bending. Um, you wind up with a tessellation of the sphere with slices of triangle space. Um, but I'm running over the time I had said so. Um, hopefully, this was a little bit mind stretching. A little bit fun, whatever. Um, does anyone have any immediate thoughts on this format? I like it. Let's do it again. OK. Um, if anyone has any, oh, did I saw a murmur? OK. Um, I was hoping to get a little more interactive than we got. Um, and this wasn't quite as, as jocular as I was hoping. Um, so I'm going to try and tweak it and make it funnier. Um, uh, is it <laughs> Triangle, jo oh, you know, I forgot the song. Does anybody know the tune? <laughs> Uh, there might be giants. Yeah. Triangle, man. Yeah. Okay, we'll end with that. At any rate, um, if anybody has any criticism of suggesting how to do it better, uh, email me on the list or privately or whatever, because I do want to tweak this to something that's like just hums along. Okay. Um, particle man. Particle, particle man. man. Doing the things a particle can. can. Is what, he not, not, or is he a. What? No, no. <laughs> is he a. What? They were, they were right. Listen to that. What? Good try. Good try. Particle. It's. Yeah. it's What's he like? It's not important. A man. Is he a dot or is he a speck? When he's underwater, does he get wet or does the water get him instead? Nobody knows. Particle man. Yeah, yeah, da 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 da. You know, do go run. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you're gonna call it. Okay. Thank you, guys.